Joining me now, speaking of mates, wordsmith and broadcaster Kel Richards. Great to catch up with you again, Kel. My favourite segment. Well, can I say that? On the Credlin Show yes, every... Yes, yes, yes. Every... Say it, say it. <laughs> if I can say that. <laughs> Let's talk about the word curfew. Now, uh, Susan writes to us and says the curfew at Alice Springs is about to be extended. Kel, where does the word curfew come from? From the 13th century, from the Middle Ages. Back in those days, cottages had thatched roofs, which are obviously highly inflammable, and their fires were open fires. And there was always a fear that a spark from an open fire would set the, the thatched roof alight while ev everyone slept. And if one little cottage in the village burnt, the whole village would burn. So what they got into the habit of doing was ringing a bell about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, and it was a bell telling people to extinguish their open fires. It was a bell that was telling them to curb the fire. That's where it comes from. Curfew is curb <laughs> the fire. Started in French. It had a, a French expression saying that. Borrowed into English, anglicised from curb the fire in French into curfew. That's where it comes from. Unbelievable. Now, still uh, very topical, the word collision. Eileen said that she read that the that bridge in Baltimore, we saw those spectacular pictures, collapsed because a ship collided with it. Is that what the word collision means? I mean, surely the bridge was stationary, the ship was moving. How can that be a collision? See, Steve, you're a journalist. You understand these things. A collision is when two moving objects hit each other. If one of the objects is stationary, there is another word. It's much forgotten. It's a rare word. It is the word elision. A-L-L-I-S-I-O-N. Elision. That's what happened. The Never ship heard alighted. Of it. No, I know. It's, it's not well known. The ship alighted with the bridge. But as you say, no one knows this, uh, including police media who keep telling us about the car collided with the tree. And I keep thinking, <laughs> how fast was the tree going? That's fabulous. I, know, I must uh, work out a way to get that word into a column at some point when I write it. Let's talk about May Day. Now, Dave said the word May Day uh, was in the headline. Of course, the ship's captain uh, radioed he had a May Day. Why is a distress call referred to as May Day? Did it all, they all happen in May? Oh, no, no. We know exactly when this one came in, 1923, and who came up with it? A bloke named Fred Mockton. Now, Fred Mockton was a radio operator at Croydon Airport in England. And this is the very early days of radio technology and aviation technology. And when they started flying, they, they used the, the Morse signal of SOS to indicate distress. But with those primitive radios, it was really hard to pick up the symbol and sound of the S, so they needed something else. So they said to Fred Mockton, you're our chief radio operator, come up with another word to indicate distress. Now, most of the flying at that time was between Le Bourget in France and Croydon in England, so he chose a French expression. Now, I don't know French, Steve. Your French would be better than mine. But the word he picked is something like... No. Uh, Maidere. Maidere was something like that. And he turned it into an English expression. He anglicised it to the word Mayday because it's really clear, really simple, easy to remember. So Fred invented Mayday in 1923. We've had it ever since, and it is still the word used for distress. We've run out of time to talk pear shape. Thankfully, we didn't go pear shape tonight, Kel Richards. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you with Peter on the program next week.